right, let's go ahead and start. Welcome to the weekly stand-up meeting uh, for Open Research Institute field programmable gate array work. Uh, what we do is we talk about what we've done over the past week, what we have planned for the next week. If there's any resources that are needed and any roadblocks that we have uh, that I can help with. And what we'll do is um, give these reports. And then uh, if someone hasn't spoken, please go ahead and pick them as the next person uh, so that we can, can move down the list and let everybody have a chance to talk. So I'll, I'll go ahead and start uh, very briefly. I've had uh, a very uh, interesting experience learning about uh, RISC-V architecture and, and all of that through some, some classwork. Uh, transaction Verilog, didn't know about that before. Now I uh, know a lot more. Uh, built a, a core a CPU, uh, RISC-V in Verilog, got it working. And the next step is to verify it. So hopefully this will help uh, better support the work that we're doing because the lessons learned from doing implementing a RISC-V core and, and doing a formal verification of it, the goal is to have uh, verified work for uh, phase four. Um, plenty of other things like that going on, but that's the main thing that's uh, been done over the past week. The Petalinux class from Xilinx that I'm taking, really good stuff. I've been trying to, to put back into the FPGA channel things that we need to know. And it really does help to hear the like a formal presentation of what Petalinux is and does and how it can help us. Uh, lots and lots of potential there to develop a, a, you know, an embedded Linux image that handles uh, all of the very different things that we have to do. All right, and then any, uh, there's plenty of resources that, I, that I'm after and I'm looking for and working on. Uh, the roadblocks are still logistics. Um, still working on getting the second remote lab up and running and transferred. That's going to take many weeks, if not months, um, but it's progressing. So looking forward to doubling our capacity for remote labs and to have one that is um, that is also open to doing interferometry work with a large dish installation and and that will also be um, working with the, the the big dish at the Huntsville Space and Rocket Center. So that's going to be a, another opportunity for a lot of FPGA work that we have. And I, I it'll be many months from now. All right, and, and a special welcome to Aaron Oliveres. Uh, why don't you take the floor next and uh, introduce yourself and let us know uh, your stand-up content. Sure, uh, thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Aaron Olivares. Uh, my call sign is KI5BAB. And um, I'm a new member of the FPGA team. I'm just getting spun up. And I'm also a maintainer for OpenCPI. And OpenCPI sounds, stands for Open Component Portability Infrastructure. So it's a framework that helps um, design applications that target both the general purpose processor, the ARM, and, and the FPGA. So I, I, the reason I'm here um, is I know you guys are, are in, in the part where you're going to um, direct memory access from the FPGA to the ARM. So I thought this, this project might be helpful. It, um, within phase four ground. Um, as far as my stand-up goes, uh, a, a support project for the ZC, ZC706 uh, within OpenCPI, because that's one of the platforms I know you guys are working with. I have that working in hardware acceleration mode. I was able to gain access to the remote labs. Thank you, Paul. Um, and I've also built Petalinux for the versions you're using, the 2020.2 and also 2019.2, uh, which is a version that uh, OpenCPI supports. Uh, I got familiar with uh, booting over JTAG on the remote labs. Um, and then I was also able to get uh, Andre's uh, DBB uh, FPGA Docker container running his tests as a good starting point. Um, I did start investigating the Axie for Light register maps. Um, it was really neat to, to see the, uh, I hadn't come across it before, the Air HDL and how they were doing the register accesses uh, on the FPGA and that paired up with OpenCPI. Um, and that's what I'll continue working on this week. Um, I'm not gonna use uh, Andre's right off the bat. I plan on uh, creating a simple register just to, just to read 
uh, a D word and then write it um, to start and then integrating the work that's already been done um, into that. Um, uh, I currently have no blockers um, and uh, good to be here. Uh, Andre, you wanna go next? Yeah, hi, sorry, Jeff. Um, just a second. Oh, hi. So today I'm on mobile, so I have the I have video. <laughs> hello, hello. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, can, we hear can hear you, hear you and okay. see you. That's great. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I usually join from the PC, and the PC sort of tuckled tucked in. Um, Anyways, so uh, things I've been working on. So I did read a bit of OpenCPI. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's gonna be very helpful. Uh, I didn't get to actually use uh, anything of it yet. Uh, there is a, a some learning curve and I actually didn't put much time. So there's that. Uh, I'm actually get um, trying to get the encoder to use the Ox, uh, OxyDNA. Um, I got it to, you know, I got Ox, the Oxy uh, memory mapped um, to trigger on chip scope, so I can see, you know, there's transactions being sent. I, but I'm not expert by any means in the software side, so uh, still a long way to go. Maybe Aaron can catch up and, you know, I can just um, use that. Uh, as, um, so Aaron mentioned uh, using so specific components in OpenCPI. Uh, so I, I put them all together in the encoder and put some sort of uh, uh, Axie debug stuff in between. And that sort of shows sort of the limitation of VHDL and actually very log as well. As in, it starts to get hard to, you know, put a lot of stuff together and with a register map and all of that. Um, so maybe OpenCPI can actually instantiate, you know, things in, uh, do the higher level thing, you know, uh, just connect the blocks. Um, apart from that, I got. A, so I have a. a an Arctic 7 card that I'm not using. I actually got a, a, an SBC. This is the same I think the poll has, the Odyssey. It, it still didn't arrive. So it, when that arrives, I, yeah, I plan just yeah, to run some tests on. Uh, it's just faster to run uh, than in the remote labs. Um, but yeah, and that's about it, really. Cool, thank you so much. All right, pick someone, uh, if you can see, can you see the list of people? Go ahead and pick someone yeah. to talk next. Uh, well, so Paul is on the screen here. <laughs> okay, uh, can you hear me? I'm using a different rig than usual. Yes, can hear you and no problems. Yeah. Okay, very good. Uh, it'll be a short report because I haven't done anything in the remote lab except uh, provide a little bit of support here and there this week and uh, I don't have anything immediately going on, so I'm just here uh, in case anybody needs any help with the remote lab or if I can uh, learn what's going on to further uh, expedite that. So okay. that leaves to lock, I think. Uh, please go ahead. Hey, hello, hello, everyone. Um, it's great back to be in this meet after a long time. Um, it's quite late here. Sorry, I couldn't on my camera. <laughs> so, so th there's some small uh, progress uh, regarding to the authentication and access work. Uh, I tried very hard to put a PPT uh, for better discussion on uh, uh, the point to point level so that we could finalize some stuff for, for the paper presentation that we're targeting uh, next month. Uh, but unfortunately, I couldn't. But uh, maybe by tomorrow, I'll be just uh, putting all the PPT and maybe I'll request for another discussion if, if Paul or Michelle or if you all are anyway available at any time yes. uh, for the next week. Oh, yes. that's great. Cool. And also I have some bunch of questions to ask uh, uh, related to some of the, uh, some of this work, which I did. So if, if this is the right time, I would like to go and ask or else I could uh, do it at a later point. Yeah. 
yeah, we'll close out the meeting and then I'm happy to stay on. OK, great. Cool. Yeah, Paul, you will be needed, I think, with uh, both the Remote Lab South uh, setup and also there's a lot of interest in leveraging anything that we know how to do for remote labs with M17 project when they get their lab up and running. So um, I think your your documented uh, lab access procedures are going to be reused by uh, at least two other sites. Um, that's something I know is coming. And let's see, anything else? Uh, any last comments from anybody here before we close out the stand up and go to, to Locke's uh, work? I'd like to congratulate Aaron for uh, coming up to speed so fast and getting um, uh, going from zero to fully productive so quickly. That's impressive. Thank you. Thanks. All right, very good. All right, we'll meet again next week at this time to talk about uh, FPGA progress and please uh, check in on Slack and if you have any, any uh, needs or um, uh, any roadblocks, let me know. Uh, that's what I'm here to, to fix.